This series of reflections is offered by Philothea missionaries committed to the formation of lay people. Today we reflect on the Holy Family and our gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 22 to 40. And when the day came for them to be purified in keeping with the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord, and also to offer in sacrifice, in accordance with what is prescribed in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man, He looked forward to the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God. And he said, Now, Master, You are letting your servant go in peace, as you promised. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have made ready in the sight of the nations, a light of revelation for the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. As the child's father and mother were wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Look, he is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is opposed and our sword will pierce your soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess too, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was well known in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came up just at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And as the child grew to maturity, he was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was with him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Holy Family. Dear brothers and sisters, God created Adam and Eve. He could have gone on creating all by himself. Down the centuries, every single person he meant to bring into the world. Yet, God chose to share with human beings the work of communicating life to other human beings. A fresh proof of God's love for us. God established that human beings should be born and brought up in a family. And he lovingly established the first family. Adam and Eve were to be the parents of the first human family. In God's plans, the human family is precious for two reasons, primarily two reasons. First, On it depends the bringing up of children into the world, bringing children and raising them up. Second, to a great extent, the work of leading them to salvation is placed on the family. History tells us of powerful kingdoms in the past who are no more. In most cases, 
those kingdoms disappeared, not so much because of enemies from the outside, but on account of corruption from within. And this corruption started with the family. In such cases, the family was always the first victim. Once families broke up, those kingdoms broke up with them. Remember this. If we destroy our families, we destroy our society. Now, dangers to the family affect not only society, but also the church, God's kingdom on earth. Not in vain has the family been called a church in Miniatia, or the domestic church. Pope Benedict XV, not our present Pope, the 15th in 1921, is the one who established the Feast of the Holy Family. Why? Because he was deeply concerned for the situation of the family in modern times. This same concern moved Pope John Paul II in 1981 to write a letter addressed to all Christians explaining the role of the family in the church and in the world. The concern, the same concern should be ours also. We are all aware of the dangers threatening our families today. The ties that in the past kept parents united to one another, parents to children and children to parents are growing weaker day by day, and many families are falling apart. But what has happened? Life in our world is changing fast, and that is the reason. And the change has reached our families, our villages, our countryside. Until a few years ago, People were born, grew up, lived and died mostly in the village. Our relation was limited to a few villages nearby, the weekly market being our only means of communication. We seldom went further. But things are very different today. Radio and television, together with the internet, bring us instantly news of what takes place anywhere in the world. Modern means of communication make it possible for us to cover in a few hours distances that took days to cover some years ago. And what is more, our children have to leave home to pursue their studies in towns and the cities or in search of work. On their return, they bring along whatever they picked up there, good and bad alike. Our young people in the villages and in our countryside are quick to pick up the latest fashion they come to know about. All this has shaken our families. Things will grow worse as years go by. In a few years' time, these, our children, our young people, will be called to form their own families. And one certainly wonders, what sort of families will theirs be? There is indeed reason for concern. And the church feels that the holy family of Nazareth, of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, can help us keep our families both modern and Christian, both African and Christian. The Holy Family lived in times very different from our own, but the virtues they practice continue to be precious guidelines for the families of all times and of all regions. That is why today's feast will call us back to those original values that we need to preserve in our families. Let us now therefore come to the readings. All three contain precious advice to guide our families, that our families may be preserved. The first reading is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus, known in the Bible by the name of the wisdom of Jesus ben Zira, or son of Sirach, the word ben in Hebrew meaning son. Protestants do not have it in their Bible. Actually, they are the losers for it. In fact, its name, Ecclesiasticus, means 
the book the church holds as its own. It is church's own book, of which the church often makes use of. In fact, this book had been in use in the church, acknowledged as inspired for over a thousand years before Protestants came into existence. The following are some of the reasons that prompted the author, the son of Sirach, to write the book. The spirit moved Ben Sira to write his book to help Jewish families at the time to solve a serious problem they had with their children, a problem similar to the one we have with our own. And the problem was as follows. Palestine at that time was under the rule of the Greeks. Greek people had a culture and education far more advanced than that of the Jews. They were particularly fond of sports, as young people today are. Naturally, all this attracted many people, especially from among the young. They started going after Greek fashions, Greek way of thinking and doing things, and forgot their religion. And indeed, some of them felt ashamed to appear as Jews. They began to dress like Greeks, speak like Greeks, and behave like Greeks, and started living the pagan way. In his book, Ben Sira conveyed to these young people the following message. This is what he was telling them. Those who rule us may be highly educated. But there is no wisdom in the world which can compare with what is contained in the Holy Scripture. There is a wisdom of men. That which is contained in the Holy Scripture is not wisdom of men, but it is divine wisdom. Do become learned, but keep faithful to the religion of your ancestors. How wonderful this message is and how timely even for our young people today. Yes, the modern means of communication, the modern education system, all that is useful. Make use of it. But none of it contains divine wisdom. Remain faithful to our religion, our ancestors, to the Holy Scripture, to the teachings that were imparted to us by our priests, by our sisters, by our bishops by our catechists. The passage of this Sunday, Ben Sira offers precious advice, therefore, to the sons and daughters of all times. They should love and respect their parents and look after them with love when they grow old. And what is the reward for those who obey their parents, love and respect them? First, he says, God will give them both spiritual and material blessings. Their sins will be forgiven. Their prayers will be heard. Their own children will be kind to them when they in turn come to old age. And God will grant them a long life. I wish all our young people understand this truth. That obedience to our parents, our elders, following the path that the church teaches us is the path to blessing, is a path of receiving forgiveness of sins. And they, in turn, when they become parents, will have happy families. Instead, if our young people grow in disobedience, their own families won't be a happy one. The young men and women of today will do well to heed the advice of Ben Sira. Let the young men and women of today learn obedience, learn to obey God, learn to obey their parents, and learn to take care of their parents when they themselves are old. Ben Sira reminds us all of the strict command given by God through Moses to the people of Israel and confirmed by Jesus in the Gospel. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that Yahweh your God has given to you. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 and Jesus teaches the same in Luke 18 20. The second message 
that the readings of today give to us for our families is regarding happiness. Our families certainly want to be happy. But the messenger, God's spirit tells us, families find true happiness in doing God's will at all times. In doing God's will at all times. Here, Jesus, Mary and Joseph have rightly been called the holy family. They were holy for a simple reason. No one among them ever said no to God. Joseph said yes to God when he was told, take Mary, your wife. Mary said yes to God when Mary was asked, can you be the mother of the Lord? Jesus said yes to God, especially on the cross. None of them ever said no to God. Their aim in life was to lovingly carry out at all times the plans that God had laid down for each one of them. The Gospel of today tells us, for instance, how the Holy Family was faithful to God. To understand the background of the Gospel of today, we must go back to the book of Exodus. And there we are told God freed the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt through a series of wonders. Since Pharaoh stubbornly, stubbornly refused to give them freedom, God in a single night killed all the firstborn throughout the country of, of men as well as of animals. Only then did Pharaoh let the Israelites go. Lest the Israelites, with the passing of years, forget the extraordinary way in which Yahweh had obtained their freedom, God gave them through Moses the following commandment. He told them, Consecrate all the firstborn to me, the firstborn from every womb among the Israelites, whether man or beast, this is mine. Exodus chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. And God himself explained to them how the rule should be applied. In the case of small animals, the newly born had to be sacrificed, had to be destroyed, had to be killed. But regarding humans, God never meant that their newly born children be killed, but to remind them that their firstborn child belonged to Yahweh, the parents had to redeem, meaning to buy the child back by making an offering of five shekels, the money used in the temple, the shekel. It was a considerable sum amounting to the salary of an ordinary worker for 10 to 15 days of work, a half month's salary. Now the book of Leviticus tells us of yet another rule in connection with the birth of a child. It concerned women and it was as follows. On giving birth to a child, the mother had to abstain from joining the community at worship for 40 days if the child was a boy and for 80 days if it was a girl. Those days were over, the woman had to appear before the priest and offer in sacrifice a lamb and a pigeon if the family was well-to-do, or at least two pigeons if it was poor. We read about it in Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Now the gospel we are told, Mary and Joseph offered the two pigeons, meaning they could not afford more. And thus Mary and Joseph fulfilled both rules and devotions, though they were not bound by them. You know, they were not bound by them. Jesus uh, need not to be redeemed. He is God. He did not have to be bought back. Mary and Joseph were only too aware that he totally belonged to God and not to them. Uh, neither Mary needed to purify herself of anything. She had conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Yet they submitted to the law of Moses in all humility. In fulfilling the law, Joseph, Mary and Jesus rendered to God a most precious act of worship. As the priest raised the baby Jesus and offered him to the Lord, there took place the most precious act of worship that had ever taken place in the temple of Jerusalem. And in our churches it takes place. The priest takes the body and blood of Jesus and offers it back to God and gives him honor and praise. Jesus, though still a baby, 
renewed to the father the offering of self he had made the very moment he had been conceived in the womb of mary here i am coming to do your will as we read in hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 jesus has come to do god's will mary and joseph too offered themselves to god ready to do his will at any cost ready to spend their lives at the service of jesus the members of the holy family searched for god's will and fulfilled it throughout their life they never refused anything that god asked from them they totally submitted themselves to god and in that way they became holy to do god's will faithfully implies sorrow but it brings genuine joy as well inspired by the spirit an elderly man called simeon came to the temple at that very moment and seeing the baby jesus recognized him for who he really was the redeemer of the world simeon spoke to mary and told her two things the first regarding jesus the second regarding herself Regarding Jesus Simeon said that many would be saved through him but that others would be lost for refusing to believe in him about Mary he said that she would have to suffer much on account of her son a sword will pierce your own soul Mary was not shown the time and the manner of her suffering but she accepted right away any suffering that would come her way Indeed the prophecy of Simeon started being fulfilled without delay and went on being fulfilled throughout her life A few days later the holy family had to flee to Egypt to save Jesus life For 30 years Mary endured in Nazareth the privations poor families have to endure everywhere At the death of Joseph Mary was left a poor widow and when jesus started his preaching she was left all alone during jesus preaching she feared for the life of her son threatened time and again by his enemies indeed her heart was pierced by a sword of sorrow when for 3 hours she stood at the foot of the cross watching her son die her suffering went on even after pentecost this time on account of the newly born church whenever persecuted or whenever christians fall away from their faith yet she always submitted to god's plan and in so doing joined to her son in saving the world brothers and sisters this is a lesson for all families all families should learn from the holy family at nazareth what should they learn to search for god's will in humble prayer and to carry it out trusting in lord's help to do god's will to do so is a source of inner peace and joy in family life our families very many times are in crisis because we are not doing god's will we know god's will through the commandments of god and his church and so many of our god's commandments and the church's commandments are broken in our families we refuse to accept those daily struggles and problems that is part and parcel of every true christian if you want to come after me take up your daily cross and follow me and we reject those sufferings and we thus fail to do god's will in our life and that is why our families are struggling breaking up instead if we were to bow to god's holy will our families would be happy would be joyful the second reading of this sunday is taken from the letter of paul to the christians of a town called colosse paul was in jail in rome at that time and his advice to the christians of colosse holds good for the christians of all times as to how they should conduct themselves he gives them a golden rule they should make christ the center of their lives if everyone in the family has always christ in his mind 
you may be sure that husbands will love their wives wives will obey their husbands children will obey and respect their parents and parents will treat their children with love make christ the center of your family our heart ought to be like a home where the message of christ is always received with joy our prayer should be always a prayer of thanksgiving when singing a hymn our voices are joined by a common tune so should mutual love should join our hearts within the family dear brothers and sisters on this feast of the holy family let us go home holding precious a message which the lord has communicated to us we must keep our families truly christian truly african our christian families will be what our individual families are children should respect and obey their parents and help them at all times they shall be the gainers for it like the holy family of nazareth let us humbly search for god's will and try to fulfill it at all times the christian community is our family according to the spirit let us all feel as true brothers and sisters of each other in our christian communities let us pray father in heaven we thank you for making us members of the family of blood and a family of faith help the parents to make their families copies of the holy family of nazareth by doing god's holy will call our children to follow your son in spreading the gospel and gather us one day in heaven where we shall rejoice at being part of your family forever we ask this through christ our lord amen the spirituality and teachings of St Francis de Sales the doctor of charity philothea missionaries are priests religious sisters lay women and men serving the church in various ministries specifically by engaging in the apostolates of education health care communication family youth ministry and formation of the laity philothea missionaries offer retreat programs every first and last saturday of the month at st francis de sales family spiritual center at kiserian and run various formation programs at the st john paul ii college for youth and family if you wish to design your life vocation to be a priest or a religious nun or a lay missionary or for more information on our ministries please call 0725075566 or 0731745680 or you can write to us at philothea center at yahoo.com you may also visit our website www.philotheamission.org music